So for those who were at the keynote this morning, uh, you know that we've chosen GIDS to announce ITEX 7, that's the new ITEX version. And we have two technical sessions, PDF made easy with ITEX, with ITEX 7. And uh, why two sessions? Well, the first session today is more uh, high level for people who might not know that much about PDF or ITEX. And the session on Thursday goes deeper, goes into depth about uh, PDF A and PDF UA. But first, why did we write ITEX? The first ITEX version was released in the year 2000, and it wasn't even the first PDF library that I wrote. I'm the original developer of ITEX. A problem that I needed to solve back in 98 was that I was working for a university, and at this university, uh, teachers had a Clipper application that only ran on the DOS, and that could print documents to a HP printer, and it couldn't be a network printer. So that was very limiting. And I promised them, I'll give you PDF, because PDF was uh, first released in 93, and I was a Java developer. I thought maybe there will be a Java library that can create PDF. That was true, and it wasn't true. It was true in the sense that there were some libraries, but none of these libraries was able to create PDFs on the fly very fast in a web application. And that's what I solved in 98 with the first PDF library. Now, the thing about that first PDF library is that um, you needed to know PDF by heart to use it. So, for instance, if you wanted to uh, add text to a, a page, you needed to know what the PDF syntax was to, to achieve this. And so, deep knowledge of PDF was required, and I was the only one, the only developer in my project team who understood what the library was doing. That's not a good thing, because that means that I had to debug everything. If someone wanted to change something, like move a word like half a centimeter up or half a centimeter left, I was the only one who could do that. And I, when I was on vacation, nobody could maintain the, the, the software. So I decided to throw away that first library and to rewrite the library from scratch. And that was PDF. And uh, so that problem of people having to know PDF to use this PDF library was solved by making PDF crea creation easier. I introduced the concept of PDF writer, so that's low level, that writes PDF syntax, and a high level concept of a document. And so the document, a developer can create the document and can say, I'm going to use high level objects like a paragraph, a list, a table. I create a table, I add cells to the table, I add the table to the document, and a PDF is created. That was much easier than having to position all the text uh, at absolute positions and drawing lines for the table borders. Now, short history. First release of ITEX was in 2000. We had ITEX 1 in 2003, ITEX 2 in 2007. And then in 2009, we jumped from ITEX 2 to 5. We have two reasons for this jump from 2 to 5. ITEX was originally written in Java. But we also had a C-sharp port, and it was called ITEX Sharp. And the ITEX Sharp version was already at 4, while the ITEX version was still at 2. And we wanted to synchronize version numbers. So uh, that was one reason to jump from 2 to 5, so that we could keep the version numbers of ITEX and ITEX Sharp, the Java and the uh, C-sharp uh, version, in sync. There was, a, in hindsight, a second reason. ITEX 5 was an upgrade from the JDK 1.4, that's a Java developer kit, to Java 5. And so when we thought of releasing a new version, we said, hey, this is really a, a, a big change. From uh, The new version of ITEX really changes a lot. So let's skip ITEX 6, and let's jump from ITEX 5 to 7, and at the same time, upgrade to Java 7. So ITEX 7 is the successor of ITEX 5. And it's still available in Java and C Sharp, but the official release of ITEX 7 will only be in May, so 2nd of May. Now, why ITEX 7? ITEX 5 was approaching the limits of its architecture. So the, the basic design of ITEX was created in the year 2000, and in the year 2000, PDF was rather simple. Uh, it was a pro. Uh, People saw PDF as a format for printing documents. Along the years, PDF was 
became much more. There's more to PDF than meets the eye. You have PDF A for archiving, PDF UA for universal accessibility. So there's a lot of extra features. And adding these extra features to iText 5 was kind of difficult because of the architecture that was chosen. And what was really difficult for us was we had a lot of requests to, uh, to uh, support Indic languages, but our font system, our font uh, functionality, only worked with two byte characters, and we weren't able to uh, kind of, like in Indic languages, sometimes you have one character and another character, and based on the combination, you have to switch them, or you have to make one character out of the two. That wasn't possible with iText 5, and we found out that it was very hard to, to integrate this in iText 5, because changing the font layer in a PDF library means that everything else in the PDF library has to change too. So we decided to do a complete rewrite, mainly because of the font support, but this also gave us the opportunity to do a complete revision of all classes and interfaces. For instance, in C Sharp, it's usual that if you have an interface, that the name of the code starts with I. That, isn't, that wasn't the case in Java, so we had no way of looking at the name of uh, some source code. We had no way to know if it was a class or an interface. We changed this, so we took the good practices from C Sharp, we introduced them in Java, and now when you have an interface, it starts with an I. That's a simple example. There are more examples because iText had grown organically, and there were classes with a certain name, but the functionality inside this class did no longer correspond with the name. That has now been all cleaned up. We also created a new layout method module. So in ITEX 5, we had different ways to approach a document. And um, this wasn't always uh, as consistent as it could be. And so now we created a layout model that can easily be extended. So basic thing is that you have a page, you define margins, and you have text that fills the page. But you can also introduce a layout model that easily says, well, no, this page, actually, these are three columns. And so you just tell the document, you're, you're a three column document, and then you don't have to change anything in your code. iText 7 just takes care of putting everything in columns. And it's highly extensible because suppose that there's no support for that in iText, but suppose that you would like a, a document with a page where the layout is a circle, you could just extend iText to make this happen. So, um, okay. um, so these are some new things in iTex 7. And while we were at it, we also introduced a modular approach. iTex, when you downloaded it, it was like 1.7 megabyte, and it was very monolithic. And some people said, yeah, but we only use iTex to split documents, or to merge documents, or to watermark documents. We don't need the full-blown iTex. So now we have the the engine, the iText core, that's uh, open source and that's different modules, so different DLLs, or if you work in Java, different jars. And on top of iText, we have a number of plugins that uh, some people may need or some pe people may not need, but they, they reduce the weight of your uh, application if, for instance, you don't need invoicing, well, don't use that plugin. This is important also for something that Benoit is going to say. Here, iText Core will just take text or content as it is. And so if you enter uh, an Indic language, it won't look nice. But if you then plug in PDF Calligraph, then all the ligatures will be made. Benoit will explain why we chose this, this uh, approach. Nope. Next. So the basic design uh, principle in iText 7, for those who know iText 5, it's slightly different. So we create a, an output stream. Could be an output stream that sends data to the browser. So in that case, you don't write to the disk. To the disk. Here we take a file output stream. You could use a memory stream, or if you're working in Java, you use a, a byte array output stream. Then you create a document in memory. You couple a PDF writer to this output stream, and you say, I'm creating a PDF document, and this PDF document will write PDF to the PDF writer. This is an input-output class, or an I.O. class. This is a PDF class. And so if you take this approach, you need PDF 
a knowledge to add content. So that was like my very first PDF library. You need, here you need to uh, do, well, we'll see an example. You need to kind of insert PDF uh, syntax. And then you close the document and your document is created. This is low level approach. High level approach, the first three lines are identical, but now you create a document with this PDF document and no PDF knowledge is needed to add content and you don't need to close the PDF, the PDF document, you just do document close and all the underlying uh, classes will be closed. So the, the PDF document will be closed, the writer will be closed and the output stream will be closed. Maybe an example. So uh, if we have, we create an output stream that writes to a file path, we create a PDF writer, PDF document, document. We say document at new paragraph hello world, document close, and we have a PDF that says hello world. So that's, the hello world example is as simple as this. If we ha would have taken the low level approach, then we would have had to write a lot of extra code. For instance, PDF document writer, we don't create a high level document. We then have to create a page size, add a new page with this page size, take a canvas, so we, we, we take the surface of that page, and then we say canvas begin text, we choose a font, so Helvetica 12 point, we move the text to a certain coordinate on the page, we show the text hello world, we end the text, and we do PDF closed. So when you use the high level objects in iText, all this heavy lifting that you would otherwise have to do manually and, and, and like do calculations of what fits where on the page, all this heavy lifting is done automatically by iText when you use the high level objects. And we have some other examples. So for instance, here we create an, uh, another font and set the default font is Helvetica, but here we want Times Roman, so we create a font. We add a paragraph, just like we did with the Hello World example, but here we do a paragraph set font. So iText is will be rendered in Times Roman instead of Helvetica. We create a new list with a certain indentation, a bullet as list symbol, and again Times Roman as font. And we add a number of list items. So never going to give you up, never going to let you down. We are rickrolling iText. So and the result is when we add the list to the document, we have iText is the list item, the 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 bullet that we added. 12 points of space and all our list items. A very simple other example. We have an image of a fox, we have an image of a dog. These images, we can add them to a paragraph. So here in this paragraph, we have a piece of text, quick brown. We add an image, we add jumps over the lazy, we add an image, and the result is quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. So it's as simple as that, but um, I'm now going to uh, give the podium to Benoit, and he's going to uh, talk about the support for index scripts. Uh, yes, a big new feature about, I'm a very audible, is this good? Yeah, all right. Um, a big new feature about iText 7, and uh, we believe it's unique among uh, PDF libraries, is that we have explicitly enabled and um, developed support for index scripts, which are not trivial. Um, we will. Uh, I will show you some examples. I will show you uh, what the problems were and how we tried to solve them very high level. Um, so uh, in iText 5, uh, index scripts are a big missing link. They're the only unsupported um, major scripting family, uh, major script family, sorry, uh, I'm in, uh, in iText. And uh, we have received a lot of requests from uh, presumably mostly Indian developers, also other uh, South Southeast Asian, Asian developers. Um, to include support for, for example, for uh, uh, Devanagari, for uh, Malayalam, for Thai, for um, a lot of other uh, scripts as well. This is a huge opportunity for us, uh, we thought, because other libraries also support it very um, uh, limitedly or they don't support it at all. So we thought we could really, really make a splash with this. Um, so there's, there was other problems with iText 5. Uh, for example, optional ligatures in the Latin script, and the, you know, when you're writing English, it's just the Latin script. Um, the, well, I will just show you an example, because by the time I've finished explaining it, it's probably going to be easier just with an example. And if you write Arabic, 
normally you don't write the um, vowel diacritics, but for example, for the Quran or for other um, uh, important uh, uh, writing, it's, uh, it's necessary to include the vowels. So we don't support that in ITEX 5, and we will, uh, well, it's under development for uh, ITEX 7. Um, our first problem with index scripts is that we're a Belgian company, so in Western Europe, um, our biggest, second biggest office is in, uh, in Boston, in the United States, so we're mostly used to the Latin script. We also know a, a, a number of other things, mostly by customer requests, um, and uh, so we don't have a lot of expertise, or we, we didn't have a lot of expertise, I should say, uh, for the, uh, for the uh, Brahmic scripts, like the, the index scripts. Um, one of the reasons is, is that there's a lot of them. Uh, Unicode alone has uh, 49 index scripts in the, in the standard, when there's a lot more, there's about 100, as far as I, can, as far as I know. Uh, they are complex scripts, so it's not just like in the Latin script, you just put one character next to another. Um, some examples, you probably, most of you probably know either um, Devanagari, third, uh, first and third examples are Devanagari, the second one is Tamil. Um, <clears throat> The uh, glyph reposition, uh, repositioning, so if uh, in some vowel marks uh, are, uh, they're written, I, I presume that you, when, you, when you type them, you first type the uh, consonant sound and then the vowel sound to modify the uh, consonant that came, came before it. Um, but it is, in, it is placed before the, uh, uh, in, in visually is placed before the, uh, the consonant. So that's, um, it's not a major thing, in a, but it's not something we were used to in general. Um, also, glyph substitution, you see this is a diacritic for the U, I mean, I think, in um, Tamil. Uh, and uh, if there's uh, certain uh, consonants that come before it, it just gets uh, uh, changed to a swirl uh, um, uh, below the letter. And also, a very important, a very difficult thing to implement for us, half characters. Um, if the, the consonant does not carry a vowel because a, another uh, consonant follows, you add the uh, virama or halant, which is this mark, and um, in the middle of a word, then you just only use half of the character. Um, these were unsolvable issues in ITEX 5 because of the problems of the font engine. Um, one of the reasons is uh, there's no Unicode points dedicated specifically for those half characters. They are there in a font, but they are in, uh, let's say, reserved spaces that are not, you know, the, the default uh, for, uh, uh, you know, they're not encoded in Unicode. That means you can, you're free to, do, to put them anywhere else, but they can't be in the regular Unicode points. Uh, one of those, pro one of those um, or the most of those uh, Unicode points that are free are above the uh, FFFF. Um, locations, so it's impossible, it was impossible for us to do this in ITX5 because we used the, the car um, type. Uh, it's also yeah, in ITEX Sharp the same thing, and it does have a limitation. It can only be two bytes, and um, if you have to go above it, we just couldn't reach it. So it's a, that was a major problem. It would require a, an immense uh, refactoring, and uh, we decided not to do it and just go ahead and rewrite it. And as I said already, uh, ligaturization is context dependent. For example, the, the virama, uh, which is a big contrast with uh, Arabic. Um, in uh, Arabic, if you can make the ligature, you have to make the ligature. That's, you know, it's compulsory, it's something you have to do. Whereas in, um, in Divan Agari, at least, uh, it's not, it uh, depends on the word that you use. And of course, we can't write a language parser for every uh, language. That is not our core business. So we had to do something. Um, we had to uh, rewrite the font engine. We had to uh, throw everything away, keep the lessons learned, and uh, keep the uh, the new things we had to implement in mind and write a new font engine. Um, one of the, so, so the problems I mentioned before, they are solved, uh, or mostly solved. Um, and uh, some of the extra features here are automatic script recognition. In um, our previous, in ITEX5, you had to say, well, I am writing Arabic, so you have to write from right to left. That's not something that ITEX could detect um, uh, immediately or by itself, you had to specify it. So this is now solved in ITEX 7. If you write any text, it should come out uh, at least with the proper uh, run direction. And um, uh, yeah, that should be solved. Uh, this is, of course, this is based on the Unicode ranges. Uh, some, every, every 
uh, script has a dedicated Unicode range or a few dedicated Unicode ranges. And um, if we just recognize that, then we can go, uh, uh, go and write the correct scripting, uh, the correct script. Um, flexibility equals extensibility, uh, I said. So that's probably something you know about uh, um, software development. If you can write something in a separate module, module it's best to do that. For, uh, for example, for us, uh, we do this in a separate module because you don't always need it, and it's some overhead, and uh, you want to write as efficiently as possible. It's um, for us, you know, with a bit of the Western bias, it's easiest for us to, uh, to, to write uh, Latin text. So that is the default, has the lowest overhead. If you want to write Arabic or um, an Indic, uh, Indic script, then you will uh, need a separate module, but it will, will only be called for the, um, the text in the, the other writing systems. Um, so the glyph replacement rules are also implemented. This is uh, uh, different per writing system, which was also a big challenge. So we had to write a whole host of regexes and um, do some uh, context parsing, etc. And um, as I said before, the uh, alternate glyphs, this is actually the alternate glyphs locations. Right to the locations in the uh, in the font, they only depend on the font itself. It doesn't, it's not something that is encoded in the Unicode standard itself. It's uh, um, entirely dependent on the font where they implemented and even whether they implemented. Some ligatures are not implemented in uh, the um, in some scripts or yeah in some fonts. I mean, um, so this is going to be uh, if you don't know Devanagari or Tamil, this is probably going to not going to look very good to you. But if you do, you'll probably recognize the differences between the incorrect and the correct uh, writing. I hope it's readable for everybody. Um, so what the, uh, this is two problems I highlighted. The character subs uh, the, the glyph repositioning. So this is the I um, uh, sign. And it should be before this one, which is the, the H, right? Ha. Huh. Yes. Um, and so if you write it like that, it means that this, the T, I think, uh, would, be, it would be T. But it's, it should be Hiti, right? And um, so the second one is here, you see the, the, the Haland underneath the T character. And it should be, because it doesn't carry a vowel, it should uh, be only a half character. Uh, this is the difference between ITEX 5, but also ITEX 7 without the... Um, uh, without the PDF Calligraph module. So if you don't have the module, if you haven't uh, downloaded the JAR or the DLL, um, then it will come out correctly. So it will show text, but of course, if you, if you know the language, you will easily see that it's incorrect, and you can easily solve it by just downloading uh, the, the correct uh, DLL. Um, so another example for Tamil. Uh, this is mostly the same thing. This is, the, um, this is not the same glyph. As I showed before, this is the uh, la, as far as I, if I remember correctly. So it also has uh, the, um, the 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 swirl that goes uh, underneath it, and only it only happens, of course, in the um, in if you use a PDF calligraph. Uh, so this was Tamil. All of those words, if you don't know the languages, they mean uh, writer. This one is Sahityakar. I'm. I hope I pronounced it almost correctly, and uh, this one is, uh, I have it in comments, Elutala, yes, in Tamil. For other scripts, there's uh, simple, similar examples, um, uh, only it's a bit easier because you don't have to look at the context. For example, in Arabic, you have El Ketibu. Um, if you don't use the PDF calligraph model, it'll just be the letters, like spelling, like you would do in the Latin alphabet, but this is, of course, wildly incorrect if you know Arabic. I'm not even sure if this is readable to not really. Okay. Um, so uh, you have to write it like this. Like this. This is this is uh, a necessary uh, part of the of the Arabic script that you really write it with all the correct ligatures. And then I don't know if you can see it correctly here. Um, the optional ligatures in the Latin alphabet. Uh, they are. Um, you know, at, at one of the one of the important things is is it's not necessary for. Uh, the Latin alphabet to be understood, so it's all, always optional. You don't have to use this, but for uh, some, you know, if you do advanced typesetting or uh, something that uh, really needs to look as, as well as good as possible, you have to have a special font, and a special font may encode some optional ligatures. For example, the phi ligature, fi, is very common, 
But this is a more extreme example, which will take the sequence I, T, E, and put it into one glyph. If you, I don't know if you can see it correctly, but the T goes over the E, and the I rolls up into the T. This is also something that was not possible with iText 5, but is now possible with the PDF calligraph module of iText 7. Oh, yes, of course, yes. Uh, that's something I have to add right now. It's only possible to do this, these optional ligatures on the lower level. Uh, we have not encoded this because it's not a standard, standard feature uh, for most uh, for, for fonts in the Latin, uh, um, that use the Latin scripts. So, uh, yeah, you have to use the, the, the lower level API right now. So, this was a request. We have some greeting cards companies who are customers of ours, of ours and they let customers choose like a nice image and then happy birthday Benoit for instance and they position text like uh, personalized text at absolute positions and that was a request and they can do that now at the lowest level which is also what they already used because they really need this absolute positioning. So um, this is uh, the status of advanced typography, typography in iTech 7 because it's a, a different module. We can always expand on it. Uh, we have now uh, the two most common scripts as far as I uh, saw from Wikipedia. <laughs> um, the Devanagari and the Tamil scripts. There's, of course, uh, as I said already, there's 47 more. Uh, Telugu is another big one that we're developing right now, so it should be uh, available pretty soon. And others, uh, because there's so many, we can't just go ahead and develop them all. It would take us uh, about a year or maybe two. Um, so we base this on customer demand. So if you have requests, just shout them out and we'll see uh, how much we can do. You can also come to the, to the stand, our uh, uh, booth uh, after the um, after the talk and uh, talk about what what more scripts you would like to see in iTech 7. Um, also for Arabic, uh, the vocalized Arabic, like I said, for the Quran, etc., is now in development. Um, we are uh, adding this as uh, as we speak. The people back in Belgium are doing this. Um, and for Latin, the optional ligatures are fully supported already. <clears throat> Now for a more general uh, use again of, uh, of iText, uh, it's a simple example of how you would uh, use, um, for example, uh, a CSV file or anything from a database that you would just feed into a file. We will make a table uh, out of this uh, file. It's just a raw input file with all the states of uh, the United States of America with some, uh, some extra info like the largest city, the total number of inhabitants, etc. So this is the input file. Um, I will not go over everything, uh, by the way, it's uh, all in Java, but the, 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 the uh, C-sharp code would look almost exactly the same, as you probably know. It would just be some uh, capital somewhere, and maybe a property instead of a setter method um, somewhere. But uh, this is not the most important thing about this. The only thing here is that you create a table, uh, a table object, so it's a high-level object in, uh, in iText and it will um, be filled in the while loop here. So we can go to the next slide that contains this. It's also fairly simple. Um, so you, this is also the, the um, well, let's say the crafty code that uh, just puts the, the, um, the input file, the, the CSV file into string texts. And um, then you just, you know, to the table, you just add a header cell uh, with uh, the paragraph and you say, well, next token, this is from the first line. And uh, for the other lines, you just add cells for every bit of information, for every comma separated uh, value that is in there. You also set the font um, just, for, uh, just to show that we can, um, if, when we make a paragraph, we now chain the uh, setters. Uh, we can chain the getters and setters, or no, only the setters. Um, and uh, so if you have more uh, things to do, if you want to make the font bold or if you want to, um, if you change the size of the, of the font, etc., you can always do that in just one line or, you know, it would be increasingly lengthy, but it can still be in just one command. The output file, it's, I don't know if it looks good enough right now. Um, we can't really zoom in. Um, but, you know, this is just a table. As you can see, it has only very small margins and all the information is there. This is, uh, you know, and this the, he the header rows are repeated automatically. So, oh, yes, yeah, of course. Um, the table doesn't fit one page and iText has uh, done all the positioning 
and has split the table and distributed over three, three pages. But as we define one row as the header row, that row is repeated. You can also do that to define a, a footer row, but this is just a simple example. Um, yeah, so um, another example, which is also uh, one of the features of, uh, of uh, PDF, is uh, Acroforms, is that you can, uh, you know, you send a PDF file, which is mostly what you do, you send it to a customer, and you have them fill it in, and uh, you get it back, but you cannot save it as a form for a long term. You want to be able to, to make sure that it's not um, editable anymore, because that's one of the biggest use cases of PDF in, in the long term. Uh, you want to make sure that you have the correct information that you store it somewhere. And one of the um, technologies available for that is, uh, is Acroforms. So this is a simple form which just has uh, a number of fields that you can uh, fill in. We'll just look at the structure now, yes. Um, so this is the, the fields, this is wraps our uh, internal, well, not, it's not internal, we start, it started out as an internal tool. Um, to look at the, the syntax and the uh, structure of a PDF. And um, it can also analyze the uh, acro form, the, the form data in there. You can see that the, these are the names of the fields. This, the language, is a um, uh, radio button. So we can only check one of those values here. These are three checkbox values for the languages or for, for the, the experience. experience. Or... Sorry, yeah, it's hard to read for me here. Um, and then some other info. We will just fill it in in a second. In, um, in code, you can do this. Uh, one of the biggest use cases you would do for that is, for example, if you want to send a form to a customer, you already know a lot about the customer. You don't want to have them fill in all the uh, information that you already have, uh, because what if they misspell something? Or uh, uh, Unless something is uh, really uh, necessary for them to fill in, uh, you want it you know, for, for a customer uh, satisfaction, you want it to be um, fill them already if it's possible. So we just um, add the fields, so you get, uh, so you add the number of values to the, the fields and then you, wait. Closed. So yeah, then here, close, yeah. here instead of creating only a writer and creating a document with the writer, we also create a reader and the reader has a path to the source file, so to the form that isn't filled out and then uh, the writer will create a new file and we create a PDF document that reads the document from the reader and writes the new document to the writer. And then uh, you ask the uh, PDF for a form. And uh, so PDF Acroform, get Acroform from this PDF. True means if there doesn't exist one, create one so that we don't have a null value. And um, then you see the fields that we s we've seen in RUPS. We get all these form fields. Uh, name, language, experience one, two, three, and shift and info, and we set the value. And when we close it, this is the result. Yes, this is also this is already all filled in. Of course, you can see that the uh, radio button uh, has just one value, and all the experience um, checkboxes have uh, can be filled in as well. And in this case, the form is still a form, so you still see. Uh, this file includes fillable form fields, and we highlighted the fields. You can still see that these are interactive fields. Um, yeah, so uh, as I said, you, you want to solve this. You want to, to uh, be able to store these files um, as just PDFs, so then you just have to add one line. It's just form.flatten fields, so flattening means to make it to to, um, remove all to, remove, to remove all the interactivity from the, from the uh, PDF file. So then the result is uh, this, just a regular PDF file that you can store on your file server or um, wherever you keep it. And uh, um, yeah, that's just... And uh, another use case is, for instance, you have Cirque du Soleil. Someone has manually created a really nice voucher, a really, really nice ticket, and they have uh, defined some placeholders for when somebody buys the ticket, to place the name, the date, the time, uh, the row number, the seat number. Obviously, you don't want a person who buys a ticket to, to be able to change that. So that's also one of the cases where we will flatten a form. Okay, that's now my part again. Um, we'll do this once again with our database with uh, all the states of the United States. And um, so we have this small form, but one of the other features that iText has is that you can merge different documents. 
For instance, um, there are a lot of banks that uh, use iText for their customers who have investments. Every company that they invest in, they have a prospectus, they have like uh, financial data. And so one person has invested in company A, B, and C, another person has invested in company C, D, and E. And so for every customer, they need to create a customized PDF with info about company A, info about company B, about company C, maybe a cover note, and a different combination. So document assembly is one of the things that you can do with iText. And here, what we are going to do is, we are going to fill out this form as many times as there are states in the US. So um, the orange part is something we've already seen, except that I removed some get name set value, uh, get set value that I removed some because uh, the code would not fit on a page. Um, but I create this document in uh, memory. In C Sharp, it would be memory stream. In Java, it's byte array output stream. So I create a new PDF document with a reader and a writer, a writer that writes, writes to uh, memory. And I fill out the form, I flatten the fields, I close. At this moment, I have a complete PDF, a one-page PDF in memory. Now, I can also create a PDF document with the writer, and then I can take a source document, another document, that is based on the PDF that I have in memory. And then I can say, source PDF document, copy pages from one to the number of pages, so all the pages, in, in reality it's only one, to the destination document. And so um, I loop over every line in my CSV, and I add all these filled out forms, and then I, I close the document. Uh, well, I close the source document, and at the end, when I've added all the states, I close the destination document. This results in a PDF that has 50 pages, because there are 50 states, and that says Alabama, Alaska, and so on. Now, this looks okay to a human eye. This also looks okay if you would print it, but if you would look at the file size, you would see that it's, uh, it's hard to read, but it's more than 12 megabytes. That's, that's bad. What is bad about it? Well, we have used this template, and this template is added as many times as there are states. So there's a lot of redundant bytes in that document. And we can solve this. We can solve this by changing one thing, that is creating the writer in smart mode. So by default, set smart mode is true. Uh, is, is false, sorry, it's by default set mode, smart mode is false. We set it to true, and the moment we set this to true, iText will use more CPU, so uh, it will look at all the objects that are added, and it will uh, reuse objects that it are already encounters. So again, to the human eye, or if you print it, Alabama, Alaska, that looks exactly the same, but the total file size is only 365 kilobyte. So that's, we like that much more. That saves you a lot of bandwidth. Now, um, when to choose what? With smart mode false, iText thinks that all the documents are unrelated. And in main, many cases, that's a, that's a fact. Uh, but in some cases, you know that, that the, the, for instance, if you know that all your documents use the same logo, then you know maybe we should use smart mode, then we'll use a a little bit more memory because we keep a hash of all the PDF objects. So there's a, a little bit more processing done, there's a little bit more memory used, but the end result is uh, much better. So with iText, we've tried to kind of make a toolbox that allows everyone to kind of optimize his PDF creation. It's not a PDF creation one size fits all. It's not, uh, yeah, we, we, we treat every problem that we have the same way. Um, you could do that, but with iText, if you have a, a specific description of your problem, you can really fine-tune iText to create the PDF in the most optimal way. And that was the last example, and I see that we still have a lot of time left. So, uh, are there any questions? Okay, I see already a question.
uh, thank you. Uh, it's uh, just a use case, you know, we are talking about uh, iText as, you know, developing on all the languages and other things which will be uh, coming forth. So I, I was just thinking of some use case like, you know, we have now, uh, I have a mobile in my hand and a document in my hand. So mm -hmm. I would be, you know, in coming forth, I don't know what technology would be used or whatsoever, but as a use case, I want my phone to scan this document and make it, make it a writable form for me. I mean. I want this to be, you know, changed or whatever I want to, I just scan it on a, I scan with my, you know, cam uh, camera or, you know, the mobile. Um, then well, it becomes a writable form and then, you know, I can edit it or something well, which I would like to see, you know, as a use yes, case. Yes, yes, <laughs> of course, I would understand. <laughs> um, unfortunately, that is not our, uh, our core business because that's OCR, so optical character recognition. Um, I am not sure if that's how how far that is along in in for example uh in the language what language was that or what writing system was that uh yeah. no i'm just you know any this is english pure english you know I'm oh just oh any yeah, just, any yeah. languages it's oh, not yeah. just you know yeah. the uh, language specific but it could be any language where you just you know you take your uh, any device and then scan and it becomes a writable form to me yeah so that's so. that's ocr um yeah bruno will talk about this a bit more and so uh, at iText, uh, we haven't sorry we haven't invested in in OCRing. So what you have is an image, and the image doesn't know that there's text; it's just pixels. And uh, at iText, we don't do OCR. But last year we uh, had a strategic partnership with uh, with Hancom. Give that back. Hancom Hancom is a, a South Korean developer, South Korean vendor of productivity software, and. Um, they have software that does recognize languages. The next Winter Olympics are in South Korea, and Hancom is the partner of the Winter Olympics for all the athletes. All the athletes will have uh, an app on their smartphone from Hancom that allows them to kind of scan Korean, like uh, a street name or a menu, and automatically it will be translated in the language of the athlete. So that's uh, something that is uh, not yet released, I think, for the big public. But Hancom is like the, the partner of iText. And Hancom works with Sistran. Sistran is the underlying translation software. So it's not just recognizing the text, it's also translating it. And, but that's, that's something we, we are, well, we, sometimes we, we, we uh, describe ourselves as a big company because we have offices in the US, Belgium, and Singapore. But we are a small company, and to do such things, we need partners. And the, those partners are Hancom in South Korea and Sistron, which is, th I think, a French company. Okay. More questions? So um, on Thursday, so we, we, we've just scratched the surface. Uh, on Thursday, we will look at the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog example once more. But then we will uh, make it a PDF A document, PDF A1 level B, PDF A1 level A, PDF A3, and we'll look at what's different, what's, what, what's so special about PDF A. And then we also make it a PDF UA uh, document, and we'll look at what's so special about, about PDF UA. And so by using this very simple example, we can explain the principles of PDF A and PDF UA, but then we'll redo the uh, table example, the, the United States uh, table, and we'll make it a PDF A3 and PDF, A, uh, PDF UA document. Uh, so that's uh, for Thursday, I think, 11.30. So uh, thank you for uh, being present at our talk. And uh, if you have further questions, we have a booth uh, next door. Uh, so please join the booth. OK. Mm -hmm. yep. So um, digital signatures are described, for instance, in ISO 32001. And uh, unfortunately, ISO 32001 dates from 2008. And most of the algorithms used in that spec are outdated, like SHA-1 shouldn't be used anymore, um, and so on. So. The European Union and, and Europe said, well, in Europe, uh, digital signatures are really uh, important. And uh, 
you have Etsy, which is also a standards body, a European standard body. They have developed PADES, PDF Advanced Electronic Signatures. And PADES is more strict than ISO 32001. And so with iText, we follow the PADES rules. We're a European company. We uh, have the European Union using our software. So we follow the PADES standard. And I'm in the ISO committee for ISO 32002. PDF 2.0, it's coming in 2016. And in PDF 2.0, they will use everything that is defined in, in the Etsy standard and PADES will be used in ISO 32002. And we have full support of all these things. So not only uh, the uh, CMS signatures, but also the CADES signatures and the long-term validation. So long-term validation means, for the people who don't know, if you sign a document, you use a public and a private key pair. And so you encrypt something with your private key and you send your public key with the document so that people can decrypt the hash that is made of the document. If that succeeds, it's a sign that you have signed the document because only the person who has the corresponding private key of the public key uh, could have encrypted that. And uh, these certificates have a limited validation. So. Um, I have an EID with a smart card with a public and private key. It's valid for seven years. Um, I have a USB key. I have to renew it every year. And so uh, to make sure that a signature is valid for a longer time, you can re-sign it with a timestamp signature. And that's, that's also supported in iTech. So yeah, we're aware of that. But this is a, a, an introductory uh, session, so I didn't want to make it too uh, complex. <laughs> One of the advantages of being in the ISO committee is that you can already see what's going to be in there and support it before the standard is even out, which is what is happening in ITEX 7. Or, right or fix things. So, uh, and the PDF technic I was uh, in a panel at the PDF Technical Conference last year, and uh, they asked me, uh, what do you think is the best thing that changed in uh, PDF 2.0? I didn't have an immediate answer, but then uh, a guy from Adobe said, well, inline images, you fix the problem there. And so uh, as developers, we see a lot of people having problems and like inline images, those are images that are part of the content and they start with BI and they, stand, st they end with EI, so begin image, end image. But sometimes there's an EI in the content of the image. And so parsers, they see, okay, BI image begins and then they parse the bytes of the image and they see EI, okay, the image stops and you don't have the full image. Uh, that was something that, is, that will be fixed in PDF 2.0 because such an inline image will have to be preceded by an L parameter and the L says the image length, the byte size of the image is that many bytes. And so that's, that's, that's the fun thing about being a developer and being in the ISO committee because you can really uh, bring real-world experience to the table. It's not just an academic group of people, but you bring real-world uh, problems to the table and you can fix them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your questions.